Hey everyone, welcome to Invert Aim, gaming done differently. I'm Feisty and this is Brendan and this is Ryan. Hello, hey guys, hello. What have you been up to this week? Uh, do you want to lead us off? I think you've had a bit more of an exciting yeah, time Mr. than we Jet have. Mr. Jet Satter, tell us. Yeah, Mr. Worldwide, so. as they call you in, around uh, the traps. I was in Berlin uh, for okay. a couple of days. A uh, very short trip though. Knocking down some walls? No, <laughs> Brendan, I didn't knock down any walls. You know the weird thing about Berlin is like you go there and everyone said the exactly the same thing. They're like, when you go to Berlin, don't mention the war. Like, like I'm going to get off my plane and be like, hey guys, have you guys heard about the war? It happened here. Mm. Like no one's going to do that. I don't know. But I yeah, a lot of Star Wars product stuff. Uh, I can talk about it now. So uh, yeah, VR, Star Wars stuff and all that sort of thing. And I'm sure we'll talk about it on a different segment. So yeah, that's what I was up to. <laughs> Outside of that, not much. Yeah, nice. I hate planes. What about you? I've been playing Destiny 2. Yeah. It is so good. I have already hit max level, hit level 20 within the first day because I love Destiny so much. Now I'm just grinding that light level up so I can start doing the strikes, get prepared for the raid. Got my Titan. She's looking fresh. Nice. Mm. So no pop tarts. This was Sounds all off the, uh, like, wow. your own back. All off my own back. Yeah. I don't need none Daddy. of that pop tart rock star <laughs> bullshit. Help me get to the top. <laughs> Do it with hard work, blood, sweat, and tears. What about you, Miss? What have you been doing? I played my friend's Oculus Rift, which was Ooh. a lot of fun, and I played just some of the demo games that come with the with the Oculus. And I have to say, pretty schmick as a as a Vive owner. It was good to see what mm. was out there. So how how did you have it? Like feelings wise, with the headset on, I think I think the the Vive feels a little bit better it's, ergonomically on the head. Yeah, so the Vive <clears> is a better fit and it's like a lot more customizable, mm. especially for a tiny headed person like myself. Um, but I have to say that the Oculus is a lot less heavy. Mm. So thinking about standing in those hours of playing a game, not that we play for hours at this point yet, but it, it does feel a lot nicer mm. in terms of the weight saving. So I was playing mm. Robo Recall. So I don't know if you guys have played that one yet. Haven't touched that one it's, yet. No. It's one of the flagships that have come out with it and it is so crazy fun. So you are obviously you're, you know, battling robots and you can tear their heads off. You can tear their limbs off slowly mm -hmm. or quickly and then use them as a battering ram and then throw them and then shooting and I was just having a great time. Wrecking house? Yeah, and um, the best mechanic of the game was actually that you can pluck the bullets that have been shot at you and if you time it just right, you can flick it and matrix it out oh, and wow. shoot and kill okay. someone with it. Might have to give I this was, a look. I was like, just like, whoo, 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 I was Neo mm. in my mind. That's one thing. <laughs> when, when you forget that people are watching you and you really let yourself go, like yeah. you look like a complete knob most of the time playing these things, but for, the, for the audience out there watching <laughs> yeah. you, it is hysterical. Uh, you know, people are moving around, jumping, panicking. It's, it's so fantastic. If you've seen that viral video of the Nana playing the oh, VR yeah. headset, that yeah. 100 she gets the knife. that was me. I was just like, oh, I'm having the best time. You were going to cut a bitch uh, yeah, And people <laughs> were just like, you need to sit down now. You're very stimulated. It's okay. All right. So the first segment which I wanted to bring to the table today is the global phenomenon known as Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Um, obviously, it's a Battle Royale simulator. Been in early access now since March. The highest selling video game of 2017 to date. 10 million copies have just ticked over this past week. 10 million. Just a catch it 10. is going insane. Um, it's fantastic to play. Have you guys played it? Yep. What do you think about it? What do you think how it's going to fare long term? Is there a finite life cycle on this game? Share some stories with me. Oh, I love that it's in beta and it is such a fun game. Mm. Like, they've tried so hard with, uh, what was the zombie one? They never quite like made Day it. Daisy. Daisy. I mm. wanted to be on board with you, Daisy. But, you know, yeah. PUBG I, I just even, came along and did it better. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's where I'm at. It's interesting because Brendan Green, who is player unknown as he's known out there, he actually designed mods for Arma 2 originally and then DayZ. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then obviously saw the success and the potential there. Engaged with some investors, I think, in Japan. I could be way off. Um, got some money, started up Battlegrounds, and now it is just going insane. Like they just had the the Player Unknown's Battlegrounds Invitational at Gamescom, three hundred fifty thousand US dollar prize pool. Um, it's just ticked over nine hundred thousand concurrent live players on Steam. So it's at the moment number one sort of game mm -hmm. on yeah. Steam as far as concurrent it, play base goes. So the, it is going nuts. The biggest thing with them is uh, is so when you said they got an investor, uh, there's a company out there that not many people are actually aware of who they are, but they're called Tencent. Mm -hmm. So Tencent actually own more than Riot does with League of Legends now, I think it is. Mm -hmm. I think they own 59%. And Tencent own pretty much every big game that you've seen <laughs> that is doing well. Tencent own a huge share of it. 
So Tencent actually bought a lot of player battlegrounds, uh, player unknown battlegrounds, uh, not that long ago. So that's good. that's probably the biggest thing for them is I think they invested something like fifty million dollars, and we're just like we can obviously see that the product's working. The player base in China is huge mm -hmm. as well right now for this game, and the player base in Korea is very very big. The player base in the Western market is huge. Like, but that's the secret of the success yeah. at the moment. Exactly. It's, 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 there's no wait time. You know, you just jump into a game and yeah, the servers is the, really well structured. The fact that they've got so many regional services mm. servers around the around the globe, anybody, no matter where they are, can get in and have a, a stable game. Any for the time. most yeah. part, obviously, it's still a early access game, so you do get a few re random gremlins and yeah, things here and there. But, but I'm willing to forgive that just because I don't have to wait. If I'm having a crappy game, mm -hmm. boom, like 10 seconds later, I'm gone. Like, I, it's fine. I had a scenario when I first started playing um, where obviously the, the premise of the game, you can play singles, duos, and squads. So you can either play every man for himself, uh, twos, or you can play up to fours in a squad. Yep. And um, I was playing duos with a mate, and you, you drop into this um, eight by eight kilometer island, and it's just battle royale. So anyone that's seen the, the Japanese film Battle Royale, Royale, or even for the Western audience, The Hunger Games, yeah, I guess yeah, is a yeah, nice yeah. thing that it can lend itself towards uh, that kind of concept. Last last person standing wins, so on and so forth. Every time I drop in out of the plane, if I pressed my parachute. Um, on my own accord, instead of just waiting it to automatically engage at the certain um, you know distance from the ground, I'd freeze and I'd be stuck in the air. <laughs> okay, so, so, so then I'd have to disengage the parachute and free fall to the ground, and then wait for my my, my duo partner to revive me. This is and that fantastic. was the only way I could get into the game this for is like ten games. I had the same thing, except it was happening to my partner, and I would be the one who was like scrambling mm. across the map, going like, oh, "I'm coming for you!" Like. Yeah. And uh, yeah, trying to grab a medipack like on yeah. my way over. Like, uh, quick, uh, quick tip good. by the way, if anyone doesn't know how <laughs> everyone else gets to the ground so fast, what you need to do is you need to actively press your parachute just before it auto engages the parachute. Mm -hmm. That's how if you ever see people get to the ground way faster than you, Ooh, if you good. press the parachute uh, rather than it automatically popping out, when it auto pops out, it shoots you about 10 feet back up in the air. Mm. That's how they do it. Sneaky rats. 10 feet Sweet. can be the difference between life and death. Well, yeah, but like I, yeah. I was always sitting there and I, me and Adam would play and I, we'd be yelling at each other like, how the hell do they have guns? Like before I'm even hit the ground yeah. and I hear gunfire, I'm like, how is this even possible? And it's that little auto shoot up that the parachute does. But uh, yeah, but I guess to, to touch on what you said, longevity of this game, biggest thing I think is new maps. Mm. Obviously it's going to yeah. be huge. Like this game is in alpha. It's not even in beta yet, right? Mm. Like and it's got 10 million copies sold. I personally think it's going to get Game of the Year um, for a game that's in Alpha, which would be the first time in gaming history that a game is going to get Game of the Year. Um, Overwatch was last year, I think, got Game of the Year. Yeah. So I don't see any other game taking over this at this point anyway. Destiny 2, maybe. Nah. But even so, I don't <clears throat> see it being as big as what this is. It wouldn't, as, as far as I guess, if we're just looking at raw sales and hype, mm. obviously, yes, this is the, the runaway winner by a long shot. But if we're talking, I guess, overall gameplay and quality, it's not in discussion as far as my concern if we're going to measure game of the year on that level. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's, it's going to win a ton of awards. Like, as you said, it's, it's been out since March. It's early access. There's freaking tournaments about this now. There's 10, 10 million units sold. Uh, they're, they're talking about forecasting in the next few months that this is going to tick over 1 million concurrent users, which has only been done once before, and that was in Dota 2 in March 2016. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this game just cannot be stopped. Like, it sold 800,000 units, I think, in the end of July. Yeah. I mean, 8 million units in the end of July, so 2 more million sold within six weeks. And yeah. you know it's still hot because it hasn't hit the Steam sales yet. Uh -huh. So yeah. full price. It's Bit, the only way yeah. you can get it. <laughs> Biggest thing, in my opinion, that they're doing as a company, which is really, really good, is rather than spending all this money on sort of putting a lot more money into the game, because mm. the game realistically is quite simple. Yeah. It's not an extremely hard game. As Brandon said, you have an island, there's a purple circle around it and a white circle in the middle. It's actually the purple, blue. Yeah. Well, the sorry, blue wall I'm a little bit death. colorblind. So the blue wall gets smaller with the white circle. You need to be inside the white circle. As the blue circle gets smaller, so does the white circle, and that's where you have to mm. be. If, you take, if you're in the blue area, you take damage. That's all they really need. They don't mm. need this insane gameplay. So all the money that they're making as a company, they're putting into more the eSports side of it. They're putting more money into, rather than upping the gameplay, because they know what they need to change gameplay-wise, they're doing <coughs> these cool events like the International already, with the game being in Alpha. Mm. They're giving a lot of money back to the community. They're doing all these types of things. And I think that's the smartest thing they're doing as a company, oh, is yeah. they're really, really focusing on the community, which is huge. Mm. So, Do we nah. think it's got a big eSports career ahead of it? I think so, especially once it goes out of early access into a full-fledged, completely stable, you know, finished product. Mm. Obviously, it's it's launching as a 
I, it's an ex, ex, it's a, the wording for it at the moment is exclusively dropping on the Xbox One at, in late 2017. There is a lot of that gray area sales speak bullshit floating around where they're like, so is this Microsoft only or is it going to come to another console? And they're like, oh, it's, it's Microsoft now. You know, like there, there is no hard yes or no. The smoke and mirrors. But yeah. that once it hits that console platform, you know, the play base again and the sales again are just going to spike because, you know, there's a lot of people that don't play PC. There's, mm -hmm. you know, collectively over 100 million Xbox Ones and PlayStation 4s out there in the wild. So, you, you know, you get a 10% attach rate on that. There's another 10 million sales. Yeah. So it's just going to go crazy. And uh, 29.99 US um, at the moment, I'm, I'm assuming it's probably going to be the same price when it's it a relatively cheap game as well. Yeah, yeah, you know, let's say 50 bucks Australian for infinite hours. Like, yeah. mm. It's a game where you might not do a whole lot for 90% of your match, but you'll remember that one moment when you like knock out a guy with your fist at the start <laughs> or some ridiculous <laughs> shot or yeah. you know, run over someone with the vehicle. It's just, it's all about them little things and the tension. Well, yeah, it's it's a great way to put it because everyone I talk to about PUBG, they always have that one or two stories where they're mm -hmm. like, did this happen to you? Or, you know, this is my experience. And you kind of feel that excitement yeah. and you're like, dude, I've, I've had that rush in that game. I've jumped so many times last night because I'll just be running in a field and you press X and you put your, your guns away and you're running along yep. and then out of nowhere I'll get shot and then I just don't know where I died from. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is the most frustratingly fun thing that I've done in a long oh, time. Yeah. It kills me. I've screamed. I have broken people's headsets. Just, I don't know. There is something, right, as you said, where you're just like having a moment yep. by yourself and everything's fine and then it's not okay yep. and you're dead. It's very distressing oh, yeah. to me. No, Player Unknown and, and Blue Hole Studios Ooh. just kicking kill ass. It. Yeah. So our friends of Blizzard have just announced that they're launching their own esports center at Los Angeles. Guys, what do we think? Is this, is this the future? Are we here? <sighs> I, I think it makes a lot of sense. You know, Blizzard have that amount, like that much money and that amount of AAA unit moving games. Obviously, you know, Hearthstone and your Overwatch are the two biggest ones that are going to fall into this, I dare say, immediately. Uh, Heroes of the Storm, I think <coughs> they've got uh, their next three tournaments mm. are slated in October and they're all going to be debuted at the New Center, which is pretty mm. exciting. Heroes of the Storm will be huge there because mm -hmm. um, they have a lot of colleges that verse each other. Yeah, whether, or not, whether or not people Col enjoy the game, I think that it, it has a big eSport presence because of the way that they market it. Does it really anymore? Like, it it does because of the, storm, it, yeah. the thing with Heroes of the Storm, right, it's nowhere near as big as League of Legends. It's nowhere near as big as probably even Smite and probably not as big or nowhere near as big as Dota 2. But the thing with, with Heroes of the Storm is they have enough money as a company, Blizzard, oh, to yeah. say... Mm. Here's a hundred and fifty thousand dollar tournament. Mm. Play, <clears throat> and you know what I mean. So it doesn't matter how mm. popular the game is in a sense of like esports presence. It might not get a hundred thousand views for mm. their tournament, but we're talking about Blizzard. They don't need to have any sort of funding from mm. the company. They just go, here you go. Here's a three hundred thousand dollar tournament. Play. Heroes yeah. of the Storm to me has become Overwatch skin oh, yeah. farming simulator. I do that's, that. that's what it is like. <laughs> Yeah, I, I reckon if, if you can look through sort of player spike data, you'll be able to see any time they announce that there is a new skin available. Yep. For, Officer for Diva? A, yeah. I was there. That'd I be got a it. Huge, huge spike for yeah. that. And then Lala. It's a great game and, it, and it's accessible. But the thing and is, it's easy to play. I've but, had lots of friends who actually did do the Overwatch jump and then they've stayed and now they play Heroes of the Storm oh. and they're like, hey, do you want to play? And I'm like, nah, back on Overwatch, baby. Mm. But, you know, that's. Each to their own I think the big level cap in Heroes is good, where it's like you can get your level to like over a thousand. Mm. I think that's a cool incentive, where it's like you know a lot of other games like that, the MOBA style games, you get like level thirty and that's max level. I think that's one of the cool mm. things. Like I remember I logged back onto Heroes of the Storm after the patch where they changed it, where there's like these big level caps, and I was like level four hundred and something, and I was like, cool, <laughs> yeah, right, right over. Yeah. <laughs> cool. like, I didn't so, own this, but it's fine. I'll take yeah, it. It's good. It's, it's nice. nice. So um, big titles. Blizzard Entertainment Arena. Um, 54,000 square feet, 35 Pretty acres, impressive. so it's a serious, serious size space. Mm. And a name like Blizzard Activision behind it, you know they're going to fully commit to this. They're already confirming that um, they're going to do the Overwatch Contenders playoffs in October and, as you said, the Hearthstone Summer Championship event. Um, and then they want to try and make this as the home for the mm. inaugural season of Overwatch. What do you think, like... I, I like what they're doing a lot of these tournaments around the world where they're, they're rotating across countries where this might sort of rope Blizzard in and just keep it LA based so it's going to sort of handcuff a lot of their fan base where they obviously can't afford the money for the pilgrimage to LA to watch these events. Do you think that's going to be a detriment to this or 
What do you reckon? Well, I think I, I think no, just based on the simple fact that they're obviously going to be streamed as well. Mm. I think that's an obvious yeah. thing. Like we we all know that the the events are going to be streamed. Warcraft stream was live this morning, and that's filmed in LA. Um, so I think that it's always going to be visible for people to watch it if they want to. I think the second thing with this is the reason why it's a good thing is when you're looking at Blizzard, they're not a small company where they can literally fly in all these players from all around the world. It's not like you're going to have, if a team makes it into the league, they're not going to have to worry about covering their flights, right? Blizzard is one of those companies that if you make it into, say, the preliminary finals or whatever like that, or you make it into the smaller part of the tournament or even the lower bracket, more than likely they're going to fly out people to the studio. Mm. There's a lot of companies where you can make it into Worlds and you can make it into like the lower bracket, but you still need to fly yourself out. And with a World Tournament, if you don't understand sort of the format that it works, majority of the teams will fly out a month before. They do a thing called Boot Camp where they verse the other teams that are playing there um, and they verse each other because you might get this thing where, say, Oceanic, the world's best Oceanic team, might be the rank 50 NA team or it might be the rank 70 you know, uh, EU team. So what they do is they put all the teams together about a month before and they start to boot camp and they verse each other because there might be these strats that they've never seen and they don't want it to be like a whitewash situation. Yeah. I'm right? so, so glad that you brought that up because I think that is going to be the key downtime of this venue and the, and the use and getting those kids trained up to like see and be in an arena because there's something mm. quite intimidating even without a crowd just being there in that physical, mm. you know, it's, it's a massive, massive room, I, I, you know. So, I think yeah. they'd still boot camp from houses, oh, just okay, to be very yeah. clear, because what <clears throat> what majority of teams do is they get like an Airbnb and they'll hire it out for a month and they'll boot camp from there. Okay. And they sort of verse each other. Mm -hmm. I'd be very surprised if they boot camp from location. That would be that would be cool that if they have awesome. the facilities. Well, they they they'll do the some dry now, runs. You know, yeah. so. They'll do some dry runs there or something. Yeah. As 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 you mentioned then, like it makes a lot of sense to get them acclimatized to that <laughs> big big game feel where they're in front of tens of thousands of people or thousands of people, whatever the cap is. Um, because yeah, it is it is overwhelming. I think overall, I think it's a good move. Mm. They're they're a monster company. You know, you look at what last year they spent five billion dollars on an animation studio, and then it, oh, I think it was four billion dollars on the animation studio, or something like that. And then in the in the same week, they bought Candy Crush for five billion dollars. So Activision Blizzard isn't a small company. They don't yeah, really no have way. any sort of mor like money worries. No. Um, they obviously now have the studio space. Esports is just a monster. Mm. They control so much of the market anyway. Um, World of Warcraft is obviously a, a, a wonderful esport as well. Um, I think that Overwatch is Shameless by far their plug. biggest one. Well, no, it's, I, I, I enjoy watching, <laughs> yeah, but, I, I, but I also yeah. understand why, just so we're very clear, I understand why World of Warcraft isn't as much of a bigger esport as a lot of the others, because it's very hard to watch, right? If you don't understand the yeah, game. It's long and grindy. It's, it, exactly, right? Like, it's very hard and there's a lot going on. There's it, only it's, so many boars you can kill in the forest, you know, <laughs> before you get tired. Boars, boars in the forest. But yeah, no, it's like when you look at something like Counter Strike, you look at something like Overwatch, you look at something like League of Legends, it's a very mm -hmm. simple format. And it's you instant don't, excitement. Exactly, yeah, right? You don't need to understand. Counter Strike to know that it's counter terrorist, terrorist, two bomb sites, bomb needs to get panted, bomb needs to get defused. That's it. Mm. And it's a very easy top down view to watch a game and very easy to understand. With something like World of Warcraft, it's very mm. lots of skills, lots of abilities macro that you use, lots of cooldowns and, and stuff like that. Yeah, so mouse. it's <laughs> macro management. <laughs> That's great. The, the thing that's interesting for me is that they're going to have um, a physical store that's always going to have limited edition merch, which is, you know, that thing mm. that we discussed at the Overwatch Tournament Champions. Where yeah. we couldn't... Playing off that FOMO. Oh, God, I love it. Um, so that does make me think they will have some other things happening there. Yeah. Like maybe it's a tour that you can go to weekly. Like they will have some sort of money revenue system. I'm wondering if they might no start ways. a little network and start filming <laughs> little shows in there Ooh. and stuff like that. Constant crowd in there, you know, yeah. generate sales and interest in that store. That'd be smart. You heard it here first. All right. The one I wanted to bring to the table this week is simulating games or simulator games. Why? Why the hell do I keep playing EU Truck Simulator and yeah. Farm Simulator? And I'm not necessarily talking more about like The Sims and stuff like that. I mean more of these like simulator games where it's literally something I could do like Job Simulator. Mm. Why do I keep playing them? Because it's instantly gratifying and better than doing my own job. <laughs> yeah, it's... That's why I play it. I, I think it's a big sense of escapism. Um, you know, I, I doubt, I don't know much about obtaining a truck license. Um, I'm assuming there's, there's a fair amount of... There's effort. There's definitely yeah, effort in involved. Europe, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you know, us, us humble Australians <laughs> here, we can't get a, a Euro truck driving license. Oh, I can. I have an EU passport, so... Well, cut tip. Yeah. Don't drive So, I, I think I think it is that 
that sense of excitement that people get where they obviously don't get to experience these types of games, you know, surgeon simulator, you know, not everyone can be a surgeon. Euro truck simulator, farming simulator, uh, goat simulator of all things. Like obviously none of us are going to be goats. You've I know there's probably the some people one. out there that categorize themselves You've left out the big one. One of the hot sailing ones on Steam. Ooh. Shower with your dad simulator. I Come on that. now, it's a I family show. That. It's a family show. I bought it was It's a game. Bucks. I thought it's so good. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> it's it's no, called it's Shower with your dad have simulator. You played it? I have. You have to run to either the yeah. brown dad, yeah. the black dad, or the white dad. With the ginger dad. It's not, it's not good. It's not good game. Don't. How do you win the game? You just do you just win go, the game by just not don't, playing. Don't go to the wrong shower. Yeah, if you That's go to the wrong dad in the wrong pocket. shower. Yeah. Jesus freaking Christ. <laughs> really? You that lose was, the life. That was like the best sixty seconds of my life. I love that game. No. Yeah. Two dollars if you want to try that. But yeah. I think I got it on the Other fifty percent off. Games. It was less. less. It was a dollar. It was like so cheap. I love that you have to degrade and bring this show down <laughs> by mentioning that game. <laughs> I'm sorry. This no whole segment was actually based just so I can talk about Shower with your dad simulator. Yeah. That's it. But no, okay. This is so, entrapment, wasn't it? So what's the what's the new one? Daddy Daddy well, something? Well, That's well obviously huge. the one we've touched on on a previous episode was Dream Daddy. Yeah. Which um, you know, as at time of writing is hundred and eighty thousand units sold via Steam. I'm one of them. I bought it. How'd you go? Do you like it? I didn't I didn't play it. I got someone else to play it and base their character around me. And turns out the goth dad didn't like me. Oh, you know, didn't I'm, I'm upset. Off? I'm upset. The goth dad didn't like me. So the yeah. idea of I think it's Dream Daddy is you play a dad, and you have to pick up other dads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So I guess the goth dad didn't like me. I wasn't his type. Prick. Jesus. Okay. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm, I'm upset. A lot of feelings. I, I guess trying to connect some threads, this is on the back of Real Farm, yet another farming simulator that the world probably doesn't need. Mm. It's coming out October 20th. It is being um, described as the, the most realistic farming simulator in gaming Ooh. history. All, this other, all this other sales speak. I'm a sucker for the farming games. I've played Farming Simulator 2017. I've played 16. I missed 15. It was a horrible year. So I... I it was back on 14 way back, but yeah, 15, didn't have time to that could be you. That was monitor my crops. Yeah. That could be you behind yeah. you. Look I, I at, think look the at character model's tractor. pretty close, actually. It's perfect. If I, anyone, I can't if wait. If anyone on Twitter wants to Photoshop Brendan's face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Make okay. it happen. I, uh, right. Yeah, I, I'm exactly the same. EU Truck Simulator was huge for stream. I, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I used like a green screen in the background, <laughs> and I put it so it looked like I sat in a truck. Uh, and I used a steering wheel and everything. Did and you I take really lots of drugs to make sure you made it no, there in I time didn't to take deliver the payload? Family show. No. That's what truck drivers do, This is the right? second episode you brought up, drugs. <laughs> you have a problem. You're the one talking about showering with dads. It's a game. It's a game. But no, um, so... <laughs> Still a <story>. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what were some of the other big ones that we talked about? So Goat Simulator, that's, that's one that we've got to yeah. touch on. Which is so dumb. It is the most ridiculous game you can ever imagine, but if you haven't played it, I know it's available on mobile now too, right? Yes. Really? And I yeah. think on mobile it, it made tens of millions of dollars in revenue as well. It, you literally play a goat, but you can turn into like a space goat, a satanic goat, um, and pretty much you use your thing? tongue and you can <laughs> lick onto anything, and if you like lick onto a car... You're yeah, like you attached attach. to the car mm. and then you can like flick your goat off and you fly across the screen. That you... sounds slightly sexual. Flicking your goat off. <laughs> I can't I can't say anything. I can't it's it's all Watch your verbiage, right? <laughs> you're just you're just a sexy guy. Why didn't Goth Dad watch you? I don't know. I don't know. I'm upset. I keep thinking about it. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, goat simulator, yeah, obviously has been selling a ton. Um, mm -hmm. one that I found that I'm actually intrigued on trying to play is Shark Dating Simulator XL. Currently 10,000 units sold on Steam. I'm buying I have it. heard of it. Mm -hmm. I have heard of it. I have bought like lots of shark games. And yes, I will play the uh, mm -hmm. shark dating I simulator. Would love I have the some pigeon. What, what was the pigeon one? The hotel oh, for boyfriend? Oh, God. seduced me some mm -hmm. pigeons. That I played that game. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously, the other <laughs> one <laughs> that's getting a lot of fanfare Job Simulator. $3 million in sales. Um, VR. VR platform, mm. obviously, via Steam, or you can play it on uh, PlayStation VR as well. Um, yeah, $3 million um, and counting so far. This it's, a, it's actually one of the biggest selling VR games. Mm. It is. Funnily enough, is Job Simulator. And you literally sit at your desk and do your job. That's you what you do. Yeah, but no, but Escapism. that's... Escapism. This is, no, but this is smart. This is the, the solitaire of the VR where they like Ooh. teach you how to use the Staplers. VR space. Yeah, because it's things that you're familiar with. You're like, there's no instruction needed. It's like, I know how a stapler works. Chink, chink, you know, like, I know how a drawer works. So it is. It's how just, does a drawer work again? 
just open it? I don't. <laughs> How do you open a drawer? I didn't know this was a pop quiz. <laughs> so, sorry, I'm just, just like. Question for you guys. What is by far the most fun game that you've played when it comes to simulator stuff? Make me pick Surgeon Simulator is pretty fun, That's what especially because you can get the Donald Trump mod <laughs> or the alien mod and, and you've got like a body obviously on, on yeah, a, yeah. like a That's surgical it. table and you, you open them up and you can take their organs out and just do all kinds of heinous acts to these bodies and it's even funner obviously when uh, the leader of the free world is on the table <laughs> getting hacked up, so uh, check it out. Very satisfying. Mm -hmm. If you haven't played Surgeon Simulator as well, it is hands down one of the finest games mm -hmm. I've ever played. Whether it be a whether it be a simulator game or anything like that, it is ridiculously fun. Yeah, and it's like like Brendan said, the the, the stuff that you can do in there will have you in stitches. Mm. Like it is, and I think now the game's like seven bucks. Mm. Or something yeah, like that. picture yeah, it's picture Operation, the old board game on yeah. steroids. That's what this game is. Yeah. <laughs> A lot more fun. Also, the thing that I like, it's that they build these like little quirks into the mechanics and it's like, you had to know that I was going to think in that depraved way mm -hmm. to build that into the game. And I apologize. you. Thank you. you know, so. These devs know that we're all sick <laughs> they know people what's at up. heart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're all twisted individuals. So that's it from us at Invert Aim. Talk to us on Twitter a little bit about Pub Girl, what you want to see happening there, uh, the new Blizzard eSports stadium that's happening, and of course, what gaming simulators you want to see out there in the big bad world. I'm Feisty Cuffs, this is Brendan, this is Ryan, and we'll see you guys next time. Much love. Adios. Bye.